A famous writer once said that the truth is not for everyone, but only for those who seek it. This was in fact a correct observation because in daily life we don't want or need to know these ancient truths based on our lifestyle. We are mostly concerned with our immediate selves rather than thinking of the broader picture and rightly so. This is the society we live in after all and the truth is used to give the elite an upper hand as the control over the masses is now beyond critical. Where humans and gods came from may be one in the same question. If we consider the gods, for example, to be our creators, then that means Earth was picked as the location for human life to grow as a civilization. But why are we placed here? There absolutely must be an answer to that question one way or another. If we can consciously ask the question, and it bothers us enough that it itches our thinking, then we must consider that this is a burning question for a reason. Our thoughts may even be triggered at certain intervals in this growth process as we expand our brains and thinking ever more forward as the decades and centuries roll on. This sense to learn of our origins and what the hell we are doing here is gathering momentum. It is a question that is now raging in millions of people's minds. The more we consider this question, the more we search for the answers and lo and behold, we are finding them in the ancient records through reinterpretations of texts that we have been wrongly told to us. Only now we are going forward and learning of these things for ourselves. We are actively re-educating ourselves to the point that we are not relying on educators to tell us things. What is happening is the phenomenon known as self-education. Through this process, we can collaborate with other truth seekers and join the pieces of the picture together. A painstakingly slow process that will inevitably involve many millions of participants. Ancient Earth inhabitants used technology to build magnificent structures on this planet that we call man-made. But the technology involved in these designs and achievements are of such incredibly advanced proportions that we must at least consider that the civilization that built these things are now lost to this world. We know there was a cataclysm, but the events surrounding what triggered this ancient happening is knowledge that is lost to us. But the signs are everywhere that there was an advanced race of beings on this earth before us. What the relationship between them and us is may be the missing link. Wait till you hear this. Ever heard about the very ancient city submerged off the coast of India? The city of Dwarka is one of the lost cities of the world that dates back to the before time. The problem archaeologists have encountered with this lost city is the very fact that it is predating known history by thousands of years. They have abandoned excavation in the region due to a lack of understanding and what they are uncovering. Basically, Dwarka has the potential to rewrite the entire context of known history, and this is causing major concerns in elite circles. It is a watershed moment. The conservation involved at this site is off the charts, so drastically huge that they can't get their heads around the task involved, so they are literally sitting there with their heads in their hands, wondering what to do, because this place is advanced, ancient, and pre-cataclysm. Amish Shah tried to contact the Archaeological Survey of India with startling replies to his polite messages. The responses suggest that they are trying to hide something. For them to suggest that someone with a few questions has a preconceived notion of something he knows very little about is very suspicious. In fact, it suggests that what they have found at Dwarka has not fitted in with their own preconceived ideas of what they thought the site was, and now they are adamant to close the door on the truth. If what they have discovered is the most ancient civilization known to us, then there must be something going on. Now, what if we were to tell you that what has been found at the submerged city has carbon dated to 32,000 years, advanced structures in ruins, submerged, and it is 32,000 years old. In Hindu scripture, it is said that Lord Krishna came to the earth from another planet. 
flying around in chariots and inspiring people who seen him as a hero. In the Mahabharata, it literally says there is a war going on in the skies above and even above that. This is a celestial war and one which he wins. This immortalizes Krishna in the eyes of the people who witness these events, and he is worshipped as a god to the would-be observer. Places like Dwarka are dedicated to such beings. Above this place, these things were witnessed, and civilization built the city here. These ancient events inspired so much, and the timeline of when this happened is mind-boggling. If Dwarka really is 32,000 years old, then what else have we missed in the contextual references of historical accuracies? In the mid-20th century, the news was breaking across the planet that a lost civilization had been discovered that predates all previously known civilizations by thousands of years, dating back to a time in history that in the today and now we class as mythology. The time of the gods and ancient advancements in technology and science and even space travel, believe it or not, the ancient civilization of this world were not the primitive race that we are led to believe. And we today are not the pinnacle of intelligent advancements of technological brilliance. It has all happened before. Marine archaeologists have used a technique known as sub-bottom profiling to show that the building's remains stand on enormous foundation stones of epic proportions. The discovery of the legendary city of Dwarka, which is said to have been founded by Lord Krishna, is an important landmark in the validation of historical relevance of the Mahabharata. It has set at rest the doubts expressed by historians about the historicity of Mahabharata and the very existence of Dwarka city. It has greatly narrowed the gap of Indian history by establishing the continuity of the Indian civilization from the Vedic age to the present day. The discovery has also shed welcome light on second urbanization in the so-called Dark Age, on the resuscitation of Dharma, on the resumption of maritime trade and use of Sanskrit language and modified Indus script. Marine archaeological explorations of Dwarka have brought to light a large number of stone structures. They are semicircular, rectangular, and square in shape, and are in water depth ranging from intertidal zone to 6 meters. They are randomly scattered over a vast area. Besides these structures, a large number of varieties of stone anchors have been noticed along the structures as well as beyond 6 meters water depth. These findings suggest that Dwarka was one of the most busy port centers during the past on the west coast of India. The comparative study of surrounding sites indicates that the date of the structures of Dwarka may be between the ancient historical period and late medieval period. Researchers were excited about further exploration of the site until carbon dating returned startling results, as well as statues, pottery, and seals dating between 3 and 5,000 years old BC. Samples of stone foundations return results that suggest the site is in excess of 32,000 years old. This site, according to everything we have been told, should only exist in the context of mythology. Yet here it is. It's real. The ruins have been proclaimed the remains of the legendary lost city of Dwarka, which, according to ancient Hindu texts, was the dwelling place of Krishna. In our previous video, we said that Krishna came to this earth from another planet. Well, consider that Krishna is the reincarnation of Vishnu. Lord Vishnu had a celestial abode called Vyakuntha Sagar. He was also known as the Lord of Vyakuntha. Vishnu is the head god and principal deity of the entire universe who came to the earth for the prosperity of man as revealed in the Vedic texts. According to the scripture, the V.I. Kuntha planets began 26,200,000 Yojanis above Sata Yoloka. It is located in the direction of the Makara Reishi, which coincides with the constellation of Capricorn. One version states that Vishnu's eye is at the south celestial pole from where he watches the cosmos. Some consider this to be a reference to the Black Knight satellite, which is said to be observing the Earth in a very elliptical high polar orbit. 
perhaps it was this god who placed the Black Knight satellite in this orbit for the purposes of monitoring humanity. Who knows? Maybe this was the same as to what the Viamana was. It is incredible that this is documented that these beings are apparently alien, and when they came to Earth in the distant past, it was obviously a very public thing. This was the arrival of the gods that they are speaking about after all, and who knows, maybe they were just checking up on us. If so, could they return one day? A few years ago, when asked as to how sure he was that this was Krishna's Dwarka, one expert had replied with the following, only the name board is missing. He then submitted a proposal to the Ministry of Culture in January 2000 that aimed at preserving the underwater cultural heritage of Dwarka and also promoting it as a pilgrimage tourism center. His proposal in three stages was to cost Rs 14 crores, 1.5 billion pounds. It is sad that the proposal was not taken up. The then Secretary Ministry of Culture visited Dwarka and promised help, but nothing has been heard so far. In the project proposal, the experts write, The fort walls of the first town of Dwarka, said to have been founded at Kuthasthali in the Bet Dwarka Islands, has been traced on shore and in the sea, and also dated by thermoluminescence, dating method to the 6th century BC. According to him, the clue to the existence of ancient Dwarka near the modern town was found during archaeological excavations near the Dwarka Desh Temple in 1979. Eroded debris and pottery provided evidence of a port town destroyed by sea about 5,500 years ago. This evidence is what led to the early excavation in the Arabian Sea near the mouth of the Gomati River where the modern town of Dwarka stands. The Indian mythology is replete with accounts of how the original Dwarka looked like. Mahabharat says that Dwarka had 900,000 royal palaces, all constructed with crystal and silver and decorated with emeralds. The city was connected by an elaborate system of boulevards, roads, marketplaces, assembly houses, and temples. These legends have been etched into the Indian minds for so long that their authenticity is not questioned. And now the rest of the world can see these historical accounts realized as reality. It is interesting to note that the name Dwarka translates to either a door or gateway to another realm. Obviously another reference to the Lord Krishna who may have used some sort of portal for transportation in the cosmos and we will speak further on that point in our next installment. Excavation of the ancient city began in the 60s and was ongoing into the 1990s when an absolute ban on further excavation was put into force until such time that they could properly understand the significance of such an incredible find. Just to put it into context for you guys, at the scale of what is under the water is said to be two cities each larger than Manhattan which are submerged and teeming with ancient buildings and artifacts. The blocking of further exploration of the site is anomalous because if this is the oldest civilization known to man that they have found, then surely the confirming of historical text like the Mahabharata would be a good thing, right? This surely proves that mythology is actually history, so what's the problem? This place is dating to 32,000 years, exactly when Krishna was alive according to ancient texts. Human history is strange in the sense that even though history has happened and it is documented, we still don't believe it to have happened. At least we didn't for many years. But our history is something that needs to be embraced instead of a tool for a would-be conqueror to suppress it. There is an overwhelming feeling at the moment that our ancient past is connected to our future. The advanced civilization that existed built and documented these things for us to find. It is obvious that the ancients knew secrets to the world that we do not know and the understanding they showed in construction methods and alignments with the stars is no doubt a message from them to us, one in which they knew we would find one day. It is notable that on the island of Bet Dwarka, the indigenous people do not speak Hindi, English or any other Indian language. They speak their own language, which is an ancient one that dates back to the period before the Mahabharata was written. 
It is also notable that if you wanted to find artifacts from the city of Dwarka, then shockingly, all that you need to do is stroll along the beach on the coast where things have been getting washed ashore for centuries. Artifacts with inscriptions are found to hand by simply looking at the ground. It is shocking and the scale on what is being lost is unthinkable. They are allowing history to slip through time here. The whole island at this location wraps around itself forming a semi-circle. It is shocking that the Indian government has a complete hold on this location in terms of not being allowed to dive to explore. There is no doubt that something has been discovered here of tremendous significance that perhaps the world was not once ready for such revelations, but in the today and now we are surely ready to learn of such things, right? In a never-ending sea of consecutive speculation, two questions always keep popping into mind. That being, who are we and why are we here? You must consider to answer such a question, we must first arrive at the answer as to why we humans exist. And the answer to that will not be an agreeable answer in the grand scheme, but we can at least sleep a little better having asked such things. To trace back the answer to such questions, we must also trace back the history of our civilization. Whether or not this process brings about a satisfactory answer or not is anyone's best guess, but we are sworn to share whatever answers we find with our viewers. So, on the island of Bet Dwarka, pottery and sculptures have been found that are dating to 2,000 years before Jesus Christ. These things are from a time that was after the before time, yet still before modern time. Somewhat a conundrum when considering history which is lost to us. When we look at the horizon at Dwarka, and indeed from Bet Dwarka, we are confronted with an image that is seemingly timeless. A literal sea of water where no obvious signs of a civilization are present other than the modern influence. Yet, underneath all the water we have sitting waiting to be discovered, the oldest civilization ever discovered on planet Earth. It is literally mind-boggling. Dwarka is one of the best studied underwater discoveries in India's Gulf of Cambay. It's still a thriving city today, but marine archaeologists have been studying its ancient underwater ruins for decades. According to ancient Hindu text, Dwarka was a beautiful, prosperous city founded by the god Krishna. Dwarka was destroyed when the evil king Salva attacked with a flying machine, Vimana, and it sank into the sea when Krishna left. During ancient times, including when Plato lived, Frequent tectonic activity caused massive earthquakes, floods, and other catastrophic events that might explain why so many cities vanished underwater. Many of these sunken cities are shrouded in myths and legends, but were those legends simply based on the geological events? Those who favor a more transcendental or metaphysical explanation suggest there is some kind of divine intervention at work, and these destroyed civilizations were paying the price of their immortal deeds. Regardless of why these cities around the globe slipped underwater, they are fascinating windows into the history of our lost civilizations. The whole area of sunken Dwarka is not a small area, it is vast and still being rediscovered to this day despite restrictions on the exploration of such a site. According to ancient explorer Amish Shah, the local people appear completely oblivious to what is on their doorstep. Of course, that being the oldest civilization on the planet that we know of. Yet the people that still live here today have not traditionally learnt of such epic historical periods that are sitting on their doorstep. Interestingly, to dive on this site would definitely reveal more, even for such a small stint. But this is all completely banned and being monitored by both the Coast Guard of India and armed troops on shore. Crazy, right? The Mahabharata epic poem describes a fascinating city called Dwarka, the dwelling place of Lord Krishna. This is the site of the lost city of Krishna, and guess what? Nobody seems to know about it. Yet, one of the biggest religions on the planet is describing this place, and it is sitting right under the noses of the masses. The Mahabharata epic is describing the largest war ever fought on Earth in such a short period of time, killing over 4 million participants in two weeks. The weapons used at this epic event is not known, but it is said to be charged with all the power in the universe, suggesting that this was an unknown weapon and one of mass destruction, and this was said to have taken place close to Dwarka. 
Hindus have no doubt that the deity with this tribe traveled from Mathria in North India to build a new kingdom of gold in Dwarka. The devotees, some among them historians, believe that after Krishna's death, a great flood washed away the city. The date of the event is not clear, but to find the truth of the city, the government is pressing into service underwater robots. Yup, you heard that correctly. The modern version of Dwarka is at the opening of the Gamti River on the Arabian Sea and located close to the famous Dwarka Dehesh temple. Every year during the birth anniversary of Krishna, thousands of devotees from all over the world converge on the city. The Department of Science and Technology is actively considering entrusting a mission to robotic vehicles that will go down into the sea near Dwarka to look for the fabled city and collect information. The program would involve organizations such as the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennaiya, and the National Institute of Oceanography, NIO, Goa. The Chennai Institute has already built robotic vehicles that can withstand the massive pressure of 5,000 meters deep underwater and function. The NIO-2 has previous experience in marine archaeology. Excavations at Dwarka have been going on for some time now. Nearly a decade ago, the Underwater Archaeology Wing of the Archaeological Survey of India discovered copper coins and fragments of granite structures. In the process of the hope for discovery, the explorers also expects to test several technologies such as underwater imaging, the mapping of the ocean floor with sonar waves, and dating of old stones and implements. The first excavations at Dwarka were supervised by Deccan College Pune and the Department of Archaeology, the government of Gujarat in 1963, under the direction of H.D. Sankalia. Over the years, it has thrown up pottery that suggests that the city could be 3,000 years old. The Modi government seriously believes that many things mentioned, like flying machines and versions of in vitro fertilization IVF, in ancient texts like Mahabharat and Ramayana, are for real, and the Indian civilization was very advanced then. The underwater robotic expedition is in keeping with that belief. In case evidence is found for the existence of Dwarka, it would be a great boost to the BJP-led government they would have historical basis to the idea of Hindu myths and their professional faith in things ancient. The quest to prove the historicity of the epics by dating them affirmatively is an old pursuit. It is also a politically fraught subject that has been making recurrent headlines. Generations of researchers have combined the study of the two texts with data from astronomy, archaeology, and paleogeography. The field has been widened to include genetic studies and natural sciences, but too little or no avail. We are far from any unanimous agreement except for concurring that the Vedas predate the Ramayana, which came before the Mahabharata. And what about astronomical anomalies that are seemingly linked to such things taking place on Earth? 